So um, just, and we have a bit more time on, on this one. So how many of you have ever used WebKit for programming? Anything? Um, WebKit GDK or Qt WebKit GDK? Um, GDK, no, no GDK on this side. Um, how, how many can program in, in C and C++? At l ah, at least some. H how many know about G object and, and, and GDK in general? A fewer? Yeah, so I will try to, to go slow. Maybe we're not finishing everything, but um, the goal of this talk is to take the fear of a big project. So even if you have a giant code base, it's still possible that you you can make changes to it and, and approach it without having to understand everything. Um, and this brings us to the second goal, which is a, a small guide of how you can start to understand uh, a big code base just by starting in, in one area and slowly starting to, to understand more of it. And we will look into different things today. First of all, we will try to figure out what WebKit is. I assume that many people know what it's used for, so we will look into the, the project itself. And then we will go through the directory structure to, to figure out um, what we do have in WebKit and what it's used for, um, how the WebKit GDK API is built, and after this we will start to to enter the WebKit source tree through the WebKit web view and, and try to understand how how things work. We are obviously not doing to finish all of this, but I hope it's going to be a, a nice introduction to approaching big projects and um, figuring out how WebKit GDK works. Um, so instead of telling you what WebKit GDK is really about, I start with the, the soft facts. In, in our project, we have the state of status of a reviewer. So if, if you make a patch to WebKit and you want it to be included, you need to have a reviewer looking at your change and giving you a plus in the bug tracker on, on this patch so it can be committed. And right now we have, uh, I sloppily counted on, on the wiki, we have about 77 reviewers. It grew a lot in the last year with Google and, and others. Um, on top of these seven se 77 reviewers, we have 100 committers. These people have direct commit access to the uh, source repository, but they're still required to, to get review on all the patches. So once they have reviews, they can actually commit codes themselves. Um, we do have the notion of a port, which means making WebKit work on a specific platform. This can be Qt or or GDK or WX or uh, an operating system like Windows, Windows CE or, or, or things like that. And, and right now we have eight ports inside our tree with varying degree of completeness. Um, Apple and Google are the main contributors of the project. Uh, actually, I think Apple did a lot of work in, in the last years, but Google is really catching up because they're throwing many, many people onto the WebKit project. And we have many, many commits a day. So it's really, really active and things move on. If you don't look for a week, you, you're sometimes amazed of what has changed in the tree. Um, yeah, to, to repeat this, a, a platform port responsibility is to, to run on a specific system. Um, and in, in contrast to, to many other systems that try to, to run on different systems, we don't have a very high level abstraction layer, but we give a lot of freedom to, to platforms to, to use the, the best possible components of their system. One example is um, the, the recent animation work and, and graphics layer support by Apple. They, they want to use core graphics and, and their frameworks on, on OS X and of course they, they don't, don't exist on Linux or, or somewhere else and the two options a project would have would be to either go for a high level abstraction to, to have a generic uh, layer framework and, uh, and things and, and lose performance on the way or 
um, just directly use core graphics and, and figure out how to make it work on, on different platforms later. And we generally go for the best solution for one platform first and, and then try to figure out how, how to abstract it and make it work for others well as well. Um, and this kind of freedom for the port allows us to, to directly use the toolkit for many things. So in WebKit GDK we use of course, GDK to have a widget. We use Cairo for painting. We use ATK for uh, for accessibility support. We use LibSoup, which was previously only used in Evolution to to do our HTTP stuff. Um, Empathy is wrong. I forgot the real name for um, for the library to check um, spelling. So we can use a lot of GNOME infrastructure in our port without forcing anyone else to do it. So we get the best out of out of WebKit, um, and as a project, we are we're quite open. So we use the IRC channel on on Freenode to communicate. We do have mailing lists for for development. We do have a mailing list for help questions. So if you want to write content or you're using any of the WebKits, we we do have a mailing list you can ask questions for. And most of the patches and bug fixes and and progress are done in Bugzilla. So sorry. So yeah, we have quite some mailing lists nowadays ranging from people searching WebKit developers to GDK specific questions to development um, to JavaScript development. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so in, in, in general, if, if we want to start looking at the, the source directory now, we so just a, a quick LS inside the source tree. It reveals uh, certain core components, which is JavaScript core, which is the JavaScript engine uh, of WebKit. We do have WebCore, which holds all the HTML parsing code, the, uh, the tokenizing of it, creating uh, a DOM tree from that, and then creating a tree for, for displaying things. It contains event handling, editing support. Actually, WebCore really holds everything which is related to, to web technologies. Then we do have the WebKit directory, which is only present to provide API on like to, to third party developers. And we, we follow a, a way that is known from, from Linux. So the everything in the WebKit directory, the API we export is pretty stable. You can rely on it being like binary compatible, source compatible, or whatever the port is promising. So this is going to change stable or uh, stay stable. And everything in WebCore is in, in flux. We we break interfaces, we rearrange code, so it's not like in other projects where you use com insights rendering engine and have com interfaces that communicate to each other. Um, we do direct function calls and we, we change the internal stuff all the time. Um, then we do have a directory with layout tests and expected results, which is inside layout tests which are run every time um, every time someone makes a, a change on, on on the tree we run through through the test suite which actually right now contains uh, 800 megabytes in tests and results we can take a look at the current tree status on on the build board. 
So we can see it works on Mac, Mac, Mac. Snow Leopard is broken. So some timeouts uh, on Windows, it looks bad too. How's GDK doing? Oh, GDK, everything is green, which is very nice. So on, on every change we run through these layout tests and, and verify that things render the way they rendered before, which means um, a web page is going to, to look the same as it did before. And finally, also an important directory is are the WebKit tools. And, and they contain tools that help us in, in development or use us in compiling WebKit. So inside scripts, we, we do have some Perl scripts to to build a WebKit somewhere at the top. Yeah. So, so one of the most important scripts for, for users to get started is build WebKit that actually helps you in, in building WebKit for your platform. And JavaScript core is responsible for, for JavaScript which is probably coming as a surprise, but it's really used for that. The interpreter contains the JavaScript interpreter. The JIT contains the just-in-time compilation code. Um, JavaScript is at the bottom of our stack, so um, JavaScript core depends on nothing, and everybody, everything else in WebCore and WebKit depends on, um, on it. And we do have a cross-platform template library framework, which is called um, WTF, Web Template Framework, which contains a lot of um, common code like hash trees or, or, or vectors or, or, or traits for, for certain things, and also a threading abstraction. Yeah, we, we see that we have uh, something which is related to threads, hash tables, type traits, vectors. And one can also see subdirectories like win, wince, wx, mac, or probably gdk at the top. Yeah, gdk, gobject. So these directories contain implementations that are specific to a, a given port. Um, Okay. The, the next biggest part of, of WebKit is actually the WebCore directory, which is responsible for, for, for everything, mostly. It contains the HTML parsing, the DOM tree handling, SVG editing, layout, the code for printing. On so anything which is related to the end 